Welcome to a new PyHole tutorial. I made two videos before on PyHole, the best DNS blocker for ads and trackers, using regular unencrypted DNS and later using DNS over HTTPS for better privacy. I have been using DNS over HTTPS method for quite a while and although it does work perfectly, it still has a major issue. All your browsing history that can be referenced to your public IP address are now residing in the servers of the public DNS providers like Google, Cloudflare, or even worse, your internet service provider on DNS servers. Of course, they claim they don't share or sell your browsing history and browsing data, and that free DNS services are for brand reputation and marketing purposes only. It's almost impossible to hide your browsing history from your internet service provider, no matter what method you use to acquire DNS encrypted or unencrypted, ISPs can still know your browsing history by performing a reverse DNS lookups on all your internet traffic. All the IB addresses that you visited before can be resolved back to their original domain names. ISPs can then use your browsing data for targeted ads and for sale to the highest bidder. And the only way to hide your browsing history and IPs from your ISP is by using a VPN service like NordVPN. But should you trust them with your data versus the ISP? In this video, I will use PyHole to block ads and trackers and set up the upstream server as a local recursive DNS server using an open source product called Unbound. Rather than using Google or Cloudflare DNS service, you get better privacy running Unbound as a recursive DNS resolver and go into the name servers directly. This way, no upstream DNS provider has your DNS and browsing history compiled in one list. Recursive DNS servers work by querying the root name server of the internet, which there are 13 logical root name servers, and then they query the top level domain, like .com or .net, and then finally they query the main domain, like elasticcourse.com, against its own name server, and so on for subdomains if any. In this setup, no intermediate DNS server will know the full URL you visited, nor have a full history of your DNS and browsing data. I will leave a link in the description box for the instructions on how to install Byhole and Unbound using an Ubuntu virtual machine running version 20.04. And this time, I'm not going to use Docker, I'm just going to install Byhole directly on the operating system it does a good job in this case by avoiding the issue with the DNS stub resolver in the Ubuntu services and it will do all the work for us. I will install all the components in this virtual machine and then finally we will do a benchmark to see how the recursive DNS resolver works. First I will install by whole component using the one liner fill script from the website. We have to enable root permission so that we can enable listening on board like 53 for DNS services. So we're gonna go ahead with the automated installer. For now we have to choose a temporary upstream DNS provider even though we don't plan to use any of them, but we have to choose one for now. So I'm gonna go ahead with OpenDNS. And for the block list for buy hole, we'll just go ahead with the default. We can expand later if we wanna block more DNS queries for ads and trackers. We just enable for IBV4 and IBV6. Now this is the confirmation for the IP address of the virtual machine. It's asking me if I want to change it to a static address, which is a good idea to avoid issues with DHCP in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and choose yes. Now we want to enable the web admin interface and the web servers. We have to enable both of them. Now for login queries, you can disable this for privacy or you can keep it enabled. I'm going to go ahead and disable this for now. Also, for the privacy mode, I'm going to choose anonymous mode to hide everything. So now I got the installation complete message. It's asking me to log in using the 10.200.100.143 slash admin. So I'm going to copy this in the URL and let's see if we can access the GUI. So now I'm inside the buy hole admin panel and we can try to log in using the generated password in here. So make sure you keep track of this or change it in the future. Right now, we don't have any clients connected to the buy hole for blocking ads and trackers. So that's why you see queries blocked and all the numbers are quite low right now. 
but just keep track of the queries answered by will choose which upstream server was used to resolve the queries so far and right now we are only talking about OpenDNS Resolver. Now the next step is to install Unbound. So we're gonna go back to the virtual machine, get out of the buy hole message, and just install Unbound. Once the Unbound has been installed, we need to create a configuration file to let it know which services to run and which IP addresses to accept queries from. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the file on this directory, etsy unbound unbound.conf.directory slash buy dash hole.conf and you will just paste the buy hole configuration in this file inside this file there is information on how to listen to the dns queries for example in this case it's only listening for localhost 127.0.0.1 and the reason we use this is because buy hole is installed on the same machine so we expect the queries to come locally and we don't need to listen on the actual interface if you want to change this or if you are using two different machines, you need to use 0.0.0.0, .0, to enable listening on all interfaces. Now the board we are using is not the regular DNS board, it's actually board 5335, because board 53 actually is used by Byhole now, so we are using a different board for Unbound. So we're gonna go ahead and save this file, and for the changes to take effect, we just need to restart the service by using the command sudo service unbound restart. We got no issues that mean the service is running correctly we can actually verify using service unbound status we can see here the service is running so now let's test unbound i'm going to use deck to ask for a dns query for lastcourse.com again is the local server 127.0.0.1 on board 5335 which is the unbound board before i do this i just want to go ahead and start a packet capture to show you how the dns query will look like when using a recursive dns server so this is my firewall, I'm just going to create a new packet capture on the virtual machine network. I'm just going to capture a small amount of traffic, maybe 100 packets, and I just want to filter on the DNS port 53 and the IP address of the server we installed unbound then, 10.200.100.143, and we're just going to start this capture. Now if we go ahead and run this query, we're going to get an answer really quick from the unbound server with the IP address 3139.71.217 which represent elasticcourse.com in the packet capture we already got 34 packets which seems unusual for just running one query so let's stop this and let's open this packet capture and see what it contains and in this packet capture we can see the IP address of the unbound server sending the DNS query first to the root name server with the IP address 198.41.0.4 the second message is for the .com or the top level domain .com and it's sent to 199.7.83.42 and then the domain elasticcourse.com is sent to 192.52.178.30 and finally elasticcourse.com is sent to 205.251.192.113 so if we try to do an NS lookup on these names to see what they refer to you can see in here a.root, l.root and finally, I got the final answer from the actual domain name servers or the AWS DNS because I'm using Route 53. So this represents the final authoritative server that gave me the IP address for ElasticCourse.com before I had to go through all these servers. And although there are multiple hops in the setup, it still performed very quick. We can actually do DNS benchmark to find out the speed of this server running unbound as a recursive DNS server when compared to the regular setup with buy hole and DNS over HTTPS. And for this, I'm going to use this tool called DNS benchmark. And we're just going to start adding name servers to compare. So these two represent the buy hole with DNS over HTTPS. And I'm just going to add the third one, which is running unbound, then the 200.100.143. And once we have all the servers ready, Let's try to do the benchmark. As you can see, after a few seconds of testing, the unbound server performed much better than the other two servers, even though their cache is already filled with some domains. And that proves that recursive DNS may not affect speed as you may think it will. Finally, to configure PyHole to use unbound as the upstream DNS server, we just need to go into the settings 
And from here, we just need to choose DNS. And we just need to uncheck OpenDNS that we use temporarily and use the custom IBP4 field. We're going to enable this one and choose 127.0.0.1 hash 5335. So now we are using local DNS server port 5335, which is the unbound port. Once we do this, we do save. Now to verify if DNS queries are actually going through by hole and unbound, we're going to run the dec command one more time, except this time we're going to remove the custom board. So now we are sending the traffic to by hole directly. And this way you're going to start seeing the queries increasing in by hole after going through the block list. After that, you just need to configure your DHCP server to hand out 10.200.100.143 as the DNS server. And preferably you can have two of these so you can have redundancy and have two DNS servers. And that's how you deploy by hole and unbound as a recursive DNS server. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.